Hi, I'm Ella and I want to speak about the experience of ODHD. ODHD is an informal term to describe people who are both autistic and ADHD and research shows that up to 80% of autistic people are also ADHD. However, up until 2013, until the DSM was updated to the DSM-5, it wasn't possible to be diagnosed with both the two conditions were considered mutually exclusive. I think it's interesting to think about that in terms of research, both autistic research and ADHD research prior to 2013, which would not have been considering this multiple neurodivergence and therefore what this speaks to about the information that we've gleaned from research prior to that date. So I am ODHD. I was diagnosed with autism in 2016 and ADHD in 2020. And I want to speak about how that multiple neurodivergent experience impacts my experience of both my autism and my ADHD and my experience of life. I think one of the first things that I found, I think particularly when I had my autism diagnosis but was unaware that I am ADHD, was feeling invalid in that space as an autistic person because of the multiple neurodivergence, I didn't really feel like I quite fit that stereotypical image of what an autistic person is and what they might experience. I think had I been diagnosed with ADHD first, I probably would have felt similarly. Another aspect is like a double whammy on my sensory experience. So there's a common misconception that ADHD is a deficit in attention when actually ADHD is a difference in attention in that ADHDers experience all the things all at once, all the stimuli, and it's really difficult to focus on any one single thing. If you put that in the context of also as an autistic person, being very much a bottom-up thinker and therefore being someone who pays a lot of attention to small details, all the details all at once can lead to a really heightened sensory experience. This can feel quite overwhelming to the point where if I am leaving my house where I'm able to control my sensory experience to a certain extent, I become very easily overwhelmed. I find myself staying at home a lot because the outside world feels very intense for me, even more so I think potentially than for someone who is purely autistic because each sensory experience is being delivered to me all at once because my ADHD, that attention to everything is pulling it all in and it's really hard for me to tune any of it out or to focus on something that might distract me away from all of those things. This also impacts my ability to focus particularly on verbal information. So if I'm having a conversation with a friend, I am also noticing everything else. I'm noticing the texture of my clothing, any external sounds, any smell, any changes in the quality of the light. All of this is being pulled in all at once. And because I'm ADHD, the person that's speaking to me doesn't stand out as a particular thing to notice. I'm kind of equally aware of everything. And that makes it really hard for me to pay attention to verbal information and process verbal information. So what tends to happen is that I miss a lot of details. Autistic people experience a need for certainty. This is described in the diagnostic criteria as a repetitive and routine need for sameness or something equally rude. But basically what it is is a need for certainty, potentially because we experience a lot of uncertainty as a minority neurotype in a very chaotic world that was not designed with our neurotype in mind. And so I have a need for certainty, which can look like needing a very routine way of living, knowing what's happening, knowing what's coming next. But going back to that ADHD, paying attention to all of the things and struggling to know which thing to pay attention to, I can find it really hard to be in the space where I'm able to follow a consistent routine. So I have a morning routine, which I definitely need, and it definitely helps me start the day. And if I don't have my morning routine, I feel very unsettled. But all of the things get my attention. And in my house, that can mean my pets, the other people that I live with. So I very often find myself get, getting distracted from my morning routine and what should realistically take about an hour and a half can quite often end up taking three to four hours for me because I got distracted by so many things and was finding it really hard to focus on the thing that I did need to do. And then I find that really frustrating because I'm behind the schedule that I'd like to be on for the rest of the day.
this need for certainty can also extend to a need for predictability from other people. And this looks like needing people to be on time, needing people to respond to ideally text messages within a reasonable time frame, needing events that we've planned together or outings that we've planned together to definitely happen without changes. Oftentimes, the people that are in my life will try and help by doing these things this way because they care about me and they want me to feel safe and secure. Because I'm also ADHD, I myself can be quite unpredictable. I struggle with being on time, following the schedule of the event that we've planned. I sometimes receive text messages, reply in my head or forget to reply completely for days at, at a time. And so then I experience this great like burden of guilt because I feel like if I'm asking people to give me this level of predictability, the very least that I can do is offer the same level of predictability back. So when I can't manage that, I feel like I have let that person down. Worse than that, because the ideal scenario would be for me to therefore then be more flexible in my approach to how other people are being in terms of predictability and be able to be like a little bit more chill about that so that I can give myself grace to be more unpredictable. But I can't do that because I find that really stressful because I have this strong need for certainty. It's a really difficult thing and it makes navigating relationships really challenging and frustrating and I carry a lot of guilt because of my difficulties with navigating relationships and communication and this is one aspect of that for sure. For autistic people, time engaging in our special interests is a really important aspect of wellness. For an ADHD, first of all, there's a challenge engaging and getting into the space where you can zone in on your special interests because focusing in on one thing is really tricky. So I'll find myself with some time set aside to engage in one of my um, interests. Then I'll get sucked into my phone or I'll get sucked into a conversation or I'll get sucked into maybe I should just clean this drawer. I have a bit of a thing about cleaning drawers. And I lose the time that I'd given myself to do my special interest because I just got sucked into something else like the ADHD is like it's like being a, in a planet with lots of planets rotating around you and you don't know which planet you're going to end up landing on because you don't get to choose <laughs> and that's really challenging and then also as an autistic person I really want to have like two three maximum special interests because choice is overwhelming I want to know what I'm doing I want it to be predictable and I also want to engage in like a deep level of knowledge or skill in that interest but as an ADHD I'm like impulsively I want to try this hobby I want to try that hobby I want to engage with this I want to learn about that and there's nothing intrinsically wrong with that but then the autistic part of me who makes lists of my special interests on my phone so that I feel safe and secure has a massive list of things that I'm interested in to choose from when I want to engage in something and becomes completely overwhelmed and finds that really difficult. So I have found myself with my list of special interests being like, right, we need to bring this back down to two or three interests because I'm not doing any of them because I'm so overwhelmed by this fact that I can't pick a couple and stick to them. <laughs> Going back to that need for certainty, I, I like things to be planned. If I'm like planning, socializing, I like to plan it well in advance. I like to put it in my diary. I like to know what to expect. I don't like last minute things. But ADHD impulsivity keeps committing to things that feel overwhelming and last minute things. So what will happen is I'll have my week all planned out. Autistic Ella is feeling really comfortable in that. And I'll be like, having a conversation with someone and they'll be like, do you want to do this thing? And ADHD Ella will be like, yeah, that sounds really fun. Let's do that thing. And I'll say yes to that person. And then I'll go away and I'll experience a great deal of anxiety from that impulsive ADHD decision that does not fit with my need for detailed planning. And then I'll end up kind of bailing on this thing that I've impulsively committed to, which adds to that guilt cycle of being someone who can end up coming across as being quite flaky because I said yes to the thing in the moment that my ADHD was leading and really wanted to say yes to but autistic Ella couldn't handle having it suddenly thrust into, into their schedule and, and had to pull out. I also experience unpredictable communication variances. So I'm someone who is very comfortable usually communicating verbally and when I'm talking about something that I'm interested in I tend to speak really, really fast and really, really animatedly. And I'll info dump about this thing. And it might be a special interest. It might be something I'm experiencing. It might be something I've been researching. 
a book I've been reading and I'll info dump about that thing really fast, really rapidly. And it'll seem like I'm someone who's really comfortable with that verbal thing. But then if someone asks me an unexpected or an unrelated question, I can't, I can't process it quickly enough. I can't keep up with that speed of Ella. I can't be that animated. I need to put everything that I've got into the processing of what's been said and I can become quite flat and the speed that it takes me to respond can massively reduce. And then because I'm someone who has adapted the trauma response of autistic masking, I find myself like overriding that, trying to mask this very rapidly speaking, upbeat, engaging, verbally competent person because people seem to like that version of me, but and also I don't know how to be like almost two completely different people conversationally and that feels like it will make me stand out as different and the reasons that we mask come into play. So I'm masking even when I receive an unexpected question by just blurting out whatever comes into my head, just keep the flow going, just keep the upbeatness going. And that is exhausting. And it means that I end up not being, not feeling like I'm being authentic because I'm not responding to those variances in communication. I'm not allowing myself to be someone who does sometimes verbally shut down and has like great difficulty summoning speech because I've made myself do it again and again and again because I think that's what I need to do. I think I need to be consistent. Another nuanced thing for ADHDers is response to medication. So research shows that ADHDers response to medication is to not find it as effective as pure ADHDers. So 50% efficiency for ADHDers versus 80% efficiency for pure ADHDers. For those ADHDers for whom it is effective, it's not showing as being as effective as for pure ADHDers. This is interesting. I'll put the citation for this research in the description box. But something to think about, I guess, if you're on the path of trialing ADHD medication as an ADHD. -er. I actually do take ADHD stimulant medication and I find it effective, but I do feel like the ADHD experience impacts my experience of ADHD medication. First of all, I experience more side effects and I also experience some strange side effects. And there is anecdotal evidence that for autistic people, it is not unusual to respond to any medication with a greater experience of side effects and more unusual side effects. We're not always believed, but that is what's happening. And in addition, when I take my ADHD medication and so my attention difference changes to being someone who's more able to focus on a single thing and more able to be in that space where I'm not being sucked in by all the things all at once, I feel more autistic. I find communicating more challenging. I have a greater need for certainty. I feel my autism kind of coming to the fore when my ADHD is medicated. And this is not necessarily a bad thing. But what I have realized through this experience is that when I was not medicating or aware of being ADHD, in some ways my ADHD was mitigating some of the disabling aspects of my autism. So I would be more likely to take myself out into spaces and have negative sensory experiences, but because of problems with working memory, because of my ADHD, I would literally forget that it was a problem. So I keep trying. And sometimes those experiences would be good. I think I've become a lot more cautious about that because I remember what happens when I put myself in those spaces. I'm so much more focused on how my body feels in those spaces. I'm not just Almost, it's really hard to verbalize, but almost when you're in the ADHD brain, you're just winging it. And so you're not thinking, this doesn't feel comfortable, I want to leave, you know? I feel like my ADHD mitigated some of my challenges with verbal communication because it kept me talking, it kept me animated, it kept me big, it kept me large, it kept me here, it kept me there, it kept me, I'm not articulating this very well, but it kind of like made me a more, sociable outgoing person to not have my ADHD medicated however it also made me someone who experienced massive emotional dysregulation problems with addiction and an inability to achieve my goals so in balance it's worth being medicated so in conclusion ADHD is complex and whilst the diagnostic criteria for ADHD and autism speak to kind of observable traits of these neurodivergent experiences the internal experience 
is something that can take a long time to untangle. It's it's nuanced, it's complex. And I'm nine years down this path and I'm still very much, I still very much feel like I'm taking baby steps in terms of untangling it. It's also very personal. My experience of ADHD is not necessarily going to be the same as someone else's experience because we're all individual humans within this experience. And so any work understanding yourself has to be coming from a person-centered space. But it, nonetheless, I hope that this video might have been useful in sparking some thoughts or sparking some conversations for you if you are or you are hanging out with someone who is ADHD. And it's definitely something I'm still working on and something that I'll continue to share my journey of on this channel. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.